This next one's about virtual columns. So it would seem to make sense to have this with a virtual me. Yes, it's virtual Connor here to talk about virtual columns. Lots of interesting things, in particular, how one column got very slow. Let's give it a go. The mysterious slow column. Now, this obviously needs a little bit of elaboration as to what the issue is here. I have a virtual column which is expensive to derive, but depending on what kind of query I'm doing, sometimes the queries are really, really fast, sometimes are really, really slow. What, what is going on? There's a very, very simple answer to this issue, and this is what I thought was the issue. And I stress what I thought because we're going to explore this a little bit further in a second. I thought I'd explain what the most common cause is before we go on to the slightly more complicated one. So I've created a table called T. It's going to have a hundred rows in it. Keep that hundred in mind because it's going to be important when it comes to our timings. Now, rather than creating an expensive column that does a lot of computational, I'm going to mimic that by creating a function called virtual column. It takes an input of C and return C, it does nothing. But the cost of executing this function is that we're going to sleep for one tenth of a second. So every time we call it, we lose a tenth of a second. Now I'm going to add that function as a virtual column, hence the function's name. Just a quick return back here. Obviously, if you want to use PLSQL functions in a virtual column, you need to define them as deterministic. Uh, given that this function returns whatever is passed to it, I think we can safely say it's deterministic. So I've added this column called slow column, and it's this call to this function. So 0.1 of a second for every single row that we access. So I've turned array size to 10, so we get 10 rows at a time. And as you can see, as I select it, each 10 rows takes a second. And that's fairly obvious because 10 rows times 0.1 of a second equals one second for each batch. 100 rows takes about 10 seconds because it's 100 times 0.1 of a second. This is the most common reason that a virtual column could slow you down. In terms of answering the question of how come some queries are slow, some queries are fast. Well, the optimizer is pretty intelligent. If I do select C1, C2, C3 from T and don't make a reference to the virtual column, we get instantaneous response. I never had to call that function. Therefore, I never had to incur that timing penalty. It's pretty smart. Even if I have an inline query which says go get all the columns from T, including my slow column, but then wrap it with an inline view to just I want C1, 2, and 3, the opt is smart enough to actually work that stuff out. And even if I have things like order by and stuff like that, right, it's all nice and quick. That's pretty cool. Even if I take this slow column and add a constraint and say I want to make it not null, that takes 10 seconds because I need to actually read every single row and apply that function and see if the return is null, which it's not. Now the column is defined as not null. And that's cool because the optimizer is now pretty smart. So if I do something like this, select all the columns, select star from T where slow col is not null. So I'm actually making a reference to this virtual column. That's instantly fast as well, because if I scroll back, the optimizer said, oh, that is defined declaratively at the table level via this. Therefore, that's an always true condition. I don't need to evaluate it. I don't need to go near that slow column and I get the instantaneous timings. Flicking back to my slideshow. So they are the most common reasons that you see differing performance characteristics if you have an expensive virtual column. It's the optimizer lending its intelligence to you, doing its best to avoid needing to reference the expensive to calculate virtual column. This is what I thought the issue was. In the process of toing and froing with this person about their issue, I said, oh, here's some examples of where it's going to be fast, going to be slow. And they came back and they said, thanks for all that information, but that doesn't seem to be the case of what we're seeing. We're seeing something different. And so we built another test case, which I'll show you now, which is quite interesting. This time, I'm going to create a table called T. It's going to have five 
thousand rows, lots and lots of rows. Now, rather than adding my function here, I'm gonna add a CPU-based expensive virtual column. Now, this looks ridiculous, and it is. All I'm doing is taking column C3 and raising it to the power of two, and then finding the square root, which brings us back to C3. And then square root power, square root power, square root power. The net result is pretty much nothing. It's just a lot of computational effort to derive this. And therefore, it's the same as the previous example. It's going to slow the query down. And we can see, this time I got 5,000 rows. CPUs are very fast, so I had to bump up the number of rows. But 5,000 rows, and I'm evaluating that, takes about 10 seconds. 5,000 iterations of this incredibly CPU expensive function. That's why it took about 10 seconds to run. Already you can see me leading down that previous path of arts oh, because you're referencing the column, therefore it gets slow. But here's where things get a bit interesting. If I do this, select star from T, order by the slow column. That seems to make common sense. If I'm ordering by it, then surely I must be querying it and getting its value. Therefore it also takes nine seconds. So far, we're still in the same realm as the previous demo. Let's try this one, select star from T, order by C3. It still takes 10 seconds. That's fair enough because I'm doing select star. So even though I wasn't ordering by the slow column, I was querying the slow column. So it, once again, 5,000 executions of that CPU thing. Nothing odd here. So far, I'm making the assumption or hypothesis that 5,000 iterations of this expensive calculation is going to take me about 10 seconds. So when I was actually investigating with this person, I said, well, let's see how much of that 10 seconds that computation is. So I did it in PL SQL, which is in theory, surely should be slower than the SQL engine because it's all interpreted code. It's not running natively in the kernel. But I'm going to do 5,000 iterations of this function. And it was near instantaneous. That's a bit weird. So then I went back to this. Let's select the slow column from T, which surely must execute this function 5,000 times in the SQL engine now. And as you can see, it also takes almost no time. So we had this very interesting scenario now. I was wrong. 5,000 executions of this expensive function actually doesn't take 10 seconds. It takes less than 0.1 of a second. So where is the 10 seconds coming from? If it's not that, how come when we do a max, it takes 10 seconds, but we select them all and it's instantaneous? How come when we do an order by the slow call, it takes 10 seconds, but when we select them all, it's instantaneous? So what's the answer? The answer is, stay tuned. <laughs> we don't have an answer to this yet. I've been asking around internally and some of the internal developers and yeah, there's a lot of head scratching going on. We've made this discovery about what is going on. Like, is that column being evaluated more than 5,000 times? Is it being evaluated multiple times per row? Is something to do with the sorting slowing it down? We don't know. We're doing some investigation at the lowest levels of the kernel. So we thought we had an answer, but we've actually revealed a new area of exploration inside the database kernel. Stay tuned, more investigation to be done, but we don't have a rational explanation for it just yet. <laughs> <laughs>